All right, what is this, 36, I believe? I believe it's 36, Number 36, yes. the big 3-6. I feel like we're moving up. Spotify did their big update for um, uh, Anchor. So Anchor, which is the hosting site. So whenever we post a podcast, it goes up to Anchor. Okay. And then um, Anchor sends it to Spotify. Spotify was like, you know what, we'll just partner with you so it's a lot easier now. Ooh. So now all of our statistics are on there, which is very nice. And, Interesting. Uh, that way... It's just a nice seamless merger. So 36 and on should be a little more seamless for us in the uh, uploading process. But besides that, you say 36, us like I do it. You actually upload. Yeah, I do all the work. I do all the hard Unless stuff. Unless you're working, and then I have to push the button. To <laughs> yeah, if I'm not here, I go, Mom. I'm pivotal. 4:30 upload. Pivotal. There we go. Um, so uh, Mom's gonna take the reins on this one today because yesterday, two week, two things this week, two big news. Tucker Carlson. Uh, released his January 6th stuff, mm -hmm. which is b a big deal. I mean, that's yes. one thing. But honestly, I think the bigger one, and I, I shouldn't say bigger, but one that's a little more, has a little more effect on the country, I would say, might be what happened yesterday with the um, Silicon Valley Bank. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that don't know, uh, one of the biggest banks in California, definitely, I think it's the number 16th bank, went under which is a big deal and mm -hmm. i what saddens me about i mean internet nowadays is and i think again it's a small majority or minority i guess is the right word but they don't really take this seriously you know they're like oh i'll just pull out my 300 dollars in that bank account right but you don't understand people aren't understanding the ramifications of when a bank closes down so last night my mom gave me Maybe one of the a very good description of what happened, mm -hmm. as my mom. As for those We'd of you like that don't, to think. Know, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't think. Have you ever given your background as a bank? Like I don't even really. I'm just know a what mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what did you do for? For work. Yeah, when you came out, like what's before the, I had you. Yeah. <laughs> you, why do you say it like that, mom? You ended it all and crushed my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> crushed my dreams, right? Just because people, when you when you talk about this stuff, I realize people don't realize that you have like a banking background. Yeah, but those set me up for like they're gonna think I was like the CEO of a company or something. <laughs> oh, here it comes! Wait, She's you mean a that, lawyer. Yeah, you mean that jet sitting outside? Is it? <laughs> but yes, my uh, my mom just you have a banking background. If you want to quickly just give people kind of like what the actual well, background, I was more I'm financial, smart. but I ended in banking, so major. I was a business major and I worked in an investment bank when I graduated. But that was right around 1987. So speaking of bank failures, the market collapsed, the stock market collapsed in 1987. So that was my first foray into the financial world. Mm -hmm. And then um, what did I do after that? I went to Mutual of New York, which is an insurance company out of the city because the city was a mess. There was no jobs. And that was nothing exciting. It's insurance. It's not exciting. Right. Then from that, I went to Citicorp, which uh, Citibank Private Bank, which retail banks or institutional banks, they divide them up and you have all different areas. You have what most people do. They go to a branch. That's the retail branch banking system. Then other people have bigger accounts or institutional like companies and whatnot. There's a whole area that does that. Most of these banks also have – and investment firms have – areas called private banking, which is usually for high net worth individuals, their families, their estates, you know, trust accounts and whatnot. So I worked there for a while. And my client with the vice president of the bank was uh, called Scudder Stevens and Clark, which was an investment firm. So we were unique in that that investment firm had individuals, but they had um, Citibank manage all their stocks, bonds, assets and stuff. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to my peers at Citicorp that would handle individuals' money, right? So like when Chris comes in with his $10 million, you would have a relationship with one of my peers and you would be their banking rep, okay? Gotcha. So I was, we had a go-between. From there, I left the city and went to, um, it was the British Bank, National Westminster. Now I was totally in retail outside of private banking. And that was in Bergen County, New York. NatWest was bought out by Bank of America. Bank of America is currently in New Jersey. It's all over the world. But um, that was similar to private banking, but more it was kind of a hybrid mix. So it was individuals, doctors, attorneys, and their lending needs for their businesses. 
and investment needs. So if they did a 401k or a, a SEP account, which is a type 401, and I handled that. Okay. In other words, mom knows quite a bit about banking and finance. Some, yeah. I mean, I, I know, no expert. I just say but that because when you things. explain what happened, like you at least have the background to know what you're talking about. So can you explain to everyone pretty much from start to finish what happened with the Silicon Valley Bank? Well, believe it or not, the story is continuing to unfold, as most as things. Most but do. basically what happened, or in general what happened is, with interest rates, we've been talking about inflation from time to time, is interest rates kept going up, 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 right? A lot of these um, venture capitalists now, they they need to pay their, their, um, their payroll every week. So they're small startups, for instance. So mm -hmm. they don't have a huge amount of cash on hand, and they need what they have. So um, with the Federal Reserve raising their interest rates, the venture capital startups, they cannot meet their payroll. They need to use their funds, right? The venture capitalists, they started withdrawing their money. FCB ran short on capital. What does that mean? So every bank has, you know, everyone's deposits. But the idea is not everybody's going to want their money back in the same debt. Right. So they have to keep a certain amount on hand at all times. I, I think before we go any further, you have to kind of explain how a bank works. Because I think a lot of people, especially our audience, because they're younger, mm -hmm. doesn't really understand that a bank really uses – so you put money into a bank and they use that money um, basically to pay out each other. Like pay out – so if I go in – I give a million dollars and I want to take money out. Technically, I'm not getting my million dollars back. I'm getting someone else's million dollars, and it's all almost like a pool of money. Right. right. So a, like bank makes, a bank makes money by lending it out. Mm -hmm. They lose money by holding it because they have to pay you interest, right? right? So, and But that's, how, that's the nature of their business. And what they want to do is they want to make more money lending it out than they do paying in interest. That's the spread in general. That's a type of spread. And that's how banks make money. Now, that's very simplistic. They do it a lot of different ways. But when people need their money, right, when venture capitalists, anybody needs their money, they want to know that they can go to the bank and withdraw it. Mm -hmm. When you have a panic is when somebody leads you to believe on a massive level that you're not going to get your money, money if you go to withdraw it. Right. Okay? And that's what happened here. Okay? So word got out that... SVB couldn't meet its capital requirements. So in other words, you have to have a certain amount of money on hand. Okay? Right. So I wrote it down so I made it clear. SVB is Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank, on. right. They were short on capital because all the venture capitalists were coming in to withdraw their money. They needed it. Interest rates were going up. It was costing them more money. They needed to get their money out so they'd meet their payroll. Okay. So word gets out that they don't have them up. They sell their bonds at a loss to raise the money. So. Right. Banks issue bonds, right? When they issue bonds, they take money in, right? Now they sell these bonds to bring their, well, tell the bonds, they bring the money in because people buy these bonds. But they were selling it at a loss because they had to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. They had to bring their capital up. Now that by itself, not a big deal, right? But at the same time, you had Silvergate Crypto going under. Okay, that was a crypto bank nearby. Yeah. Okay, they started to move some of the money out of SVB because they had short short right. shortages, so they had to meet it. So a lot of things were happening at once. The customers withdrew at the time. It was I can't read it. Forty two billion dollars. Okay. Panic began by a couple of venture capitalists who called it. So there was an issue, like on Twitter, a lot of them went out there and started putting out messages that FC F SVB was going to go under, and that's how you start a panic. Okay. What was the real problem? Like I said, there's a lot of things now. Now people start to break it down to figure out what actually happened and where did it go wrong. But it's usually a trigger, right? And in this case, it was a, interest rates, you know, was the starting point. I, I had a few articles about this, but. Yeah, there's a lot right now. Right. Like your internet, everyone's feed is probably flooded about it. Well, what they also brought up as a point, a good point. Back in the 90s, well, that's the Girl Scout cookie story. <laughs> That's even worse. We'll now, that. back in the '90s, you know, they were pouring a lot of money into. Um, everyone felt that interest rates were going to stay low. Mm -hmm. Interest rates aren't going to go through the roof. This was going on, on, on. So a lot of banks and whatnot were investing in mortgages, mortgage-backed securities, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But now that interest rates start going up, those lose their value, right? So they got caught with. The pants down, basically, because so many advisors and banks and financial institutions were investing in these long-term interest securities thinking, well, the rates won't go up because they've said, Fed said it's going to stay even. Well, what have we been seeing? 
we've been seeing interest rates finally starting to go up, 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 because we're seeing inflation. You can't keep them that low for so long. And we see the mortgage market starting to go down a little bit. Well, they're saying, oh, it's still going up, it's going up, but the rates are going up. And that's a problem. So when, when the cost to borrow money becomes too high, people like startup companies, venture capitals, those are small companies, especially in the tech area. Right. They can't get money easily. They're startups. They don't have a reputation. It's not like a Google going to borrow or, a, you know. So they pa there's a panic. So you got a lot of smaller ones. And when I say smaller, maybe it's a billion dollars. Maybe it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. They start freaking out and they start going and they need their money. They got to pay their bills. They can't absorb the risk like a lot of the other bigger firms can. Right. So this isn't just something recent, but this has been building for a while. And now you see First Republic is now having issues. Another bank. You will see a trickle effect. You're and right. that's a problem. So what we were talking about, there was poor communication by SVB when it, when it, told the world that it was raising um, needed $500 million. And then it started unloading $21 billion of their, those bonds I was talking about at a $1 billion loss. When word like that gets out on the street, people start to panic. panic. Yeah. So they tried to keep everybody calm and say, look, it's not a big deal. We have to do this. We have to bring our capital up. We have a little right. glitch. Is this technically normal in banks then? Like, does this is this like a normal situation that just got brought to light and everyone panicked? I won't say it's normal, but obviously it can happen. And we talked about this earlier. It happened in 2008. Yeah. And everybody said, oh, we got to put money into it. We have to bail these institutions out and make sure it never happens okay. again. Well, sometimes when you hear people squawking about interest rates and inflation, and you know, it all goes back to the same thing. It's only as reliable as your media, and in this case, financial media. A lot of individuals were misleading the public and telling them, interest rates will stay low. This is transitory. It's not going to be bad. Okay, at the beginning, maybe you could say, all right, that's how they're reading it. But somewhere along the line, even a, a mom like me sitting at home at the kitchen table saw, this isn't transitory. And you'd hear a lot of other not as popular um, financial pundits saying, go to the food store. Mm -hmm. Check out the price of eggs. Inflation is here. Yeah. Okay, don't believe what they're saying. American people are smarter sometimes than the, the high level, you know, Harvard financial guys because they're living it yeah. and they're saying, "I can't pay my mortgage." He, my husband hasn't, or my wife hasn't had a raise in, in six months, and the raise they got still won't cover our mortgage. Right. <laughs> so similar things. It's not that it's unusual or common, but it can happen because if you're not paying attention, right? If you convince yourself that interest rates or they're going to stay high, they're going to stay low, there are ramifications of that. And sometimes you got to read what's going on. You can't – oftentimes financial institutions try to influence the market by their comments. Mm -hmm. Yep. You, that, well, you see that a lot that. in Bitcoin. Right. Bitcoin's a great example of that. You always see these – Bitcoin billionaires predicting Bitcoin will go up to 500 million. Like it's stuff like that that's just so outlandish that can cause actual rifts in the market. Yep. Um, I guess and a better example is when Elon would uh, shoot out a tweet and certain cryptos would go skyrocket for right. like a couple of days. Kind of the same concept. But now we're talking about something that's actual tangible financial money. Whereas, I mean, not saying that crypto is not financial, but like crypto, there's more of a fluctuation that's determined based on how to demand i guess whereas money money's money right. Right? it's worth a set amount essentially right so this is where things get a little scary well it takes a lot of um it's not as easy as you would think to keep it in balance your monetary policy you've got the government influencing how much money is out there influencing interest rates and all these things work together then you know a hurricane could set off a market and that's uncontrollable but when you're trying to balance all these things it's hard enough than when you're trying to do it politically and say well let's not let people know that inflation's so bad and then they get panicked when a bank comes out and says hey we don't have enough to cover the capital because interest rates are so right, high right. that could have been a bank that was saying months ago oh the environment's great we have interest in, inflation's in check that's the kind of stuff where you know when it gets out 
you create these panics, and then there's a run. Now, had there not been a panic, maybe SVB would have been trouble, but they might have been able to make it through the weekend. Maybe they could have borrowed themselves. They could have gone to the fa- There's things that they might have been able to do. But once you start that panic, and it's just more people coming in, and now you have institutions like the crypto. That collapses too. They take money out. Now you're ta- And you're not talking mom and pops anymore. You're talking big, big institutions. Right, yeah. big, big dollar amounts going out. So I guess the next question that people are going to ask is, how does this get fixed? What's like the w- the ramification is? I mean, we lost a bank, and then the people whose um, money was in there is essentially gone, right? It doesn't get subsidized in any way, shape, or form, except for the FDIC right um, insurance insurance policy. So, uh, do you want to quickly explain that to FDIC? Yeah, just because you know it a little better than well, I back in the the depression years, that's when they came out with insuring the money because people lost everything, and the federal government will insure deposits up to it used to be a hundred thousand dollars. It might still be a hundred thousand per account, bank, right? but no more to exceed two hundred and fifty thousand. Right. Right. It doesn't depend on the bank, but it does depend on the type. Not every type. That's what I mean. Not every type. Not every account gets that insurance. Mm-hmm. They did it in the banking industry years ago because of the fact that it was banks that were overrun, and we didn't have the complex financial institutions we have today. But having said that, how do you fix it? Exactly the same way they do it every time. You and I are going to fix it. Right. You already have. Tax, yeah. Right. You already have representatives saying we have to bail them out. Okay. We have to pump money into them to carry them through. So this is why when people say, oh, our betters, people call it, or our elites, who say, well, I'm from Harvard, and I run SVB, (laughs) and I know exactly how to run things. And then when it goes in the shitter, they turn to the taxpayers of the federal government and say, you must bail us out because, you know, the expression of 2008, we are too big to fail. Well, you know what? Maybe that's not true. Maybe we need to learn a lesson at some point that – you're the one that did all these deals all those years and pumped all that money into mortgage packages. You're the one denied that inflation was coming and it's been here a long time. You didn't gradually back out of the position and you got underwater. Now the taxpayers have to bail you out. Yeah, and it sucks. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm trying to see the positive in this one, but it's it's tough. But I, I mean, this is just a sign of like, hey, less money to Ukraine. Time to start focusing more on us yeah. because the. Listen, it's terrible what's happening in Ukraine, but we're pissing away money, literally. Mm-hmm. And now we just had a ca- arguably a catastrophic like awakening of this is going to keep – this is just one bank. Yeah, it's a of, domino effect. It's going to keep going. Others. Now, at what point – let me ask you something from a budgeting standpoint, and I mean to our viewers. If you have an emergency, like a family emergency, mm-hmm. you got to spend money. You're not going to waste the money somewhere else to a friend. You're going to – focus on the emergency at home that's right that's basically what this is right now so stop yeah. pumping money into ukraine mm-hmm. this is where the money should be going right now so that we don't have to pay more in taxes that's right, <laughs> right? that's exactly that's the best way of fixing it yeah in fact i would say take some more money back but that's not well interestingly happen. enough they're, they're talking about the debt ceiling right now i think we've mentioned that in the show yep, debt ceiling. right so the debt ceiling is our level of how much we're going to borrow as a nation and it's through the roof and they keep Upping, Upping it, raising it, yeah. the debt ceiling, keep raising it. All that means is we spend more money that we don't have. Yeah. And they'll always tell you, well, politicians, well, we have to do it. We have to do it. We can't not make good on our debt to other countries because we'll right. default and that makes America look bad. Okay, I've been hearing this my whole life about the debt ceiling. Point being now, the Republicans in office or a group of them, the Freedom Caucus they're called, they put a list of demands down saying – Ukraine being one of them, right? And Ukraine no was student, something we should have never gave money to. Well, we can no student that loan, from, yeah, it's, forgiveness. Like they put reasonable things on there. My issue with that list is theirs was all about we're not going to spend this money. I agree with that. And clawing back all the COVID funds that were never used. Mm-hmm. So there's tons of money sitting around this country, yeah. sitting in a pile that are being used for ridiculous things that have nothing to do with the COVID. The amount of wasted money is also a problem. Right. Like well, they use the crisis. These politicians know. They use the crisis. They knew full well you get money in a crisis. And that's how they fund a lot of these states, blue and red, but mainly the blue states, because they give everything away under the sun to people, right? Come. It's all free. Free health. Free this. Free that. You don't even have to be a citizen. Somebody's got to pay for that. Right. So rather than taxing their citizens, you know, they take it from the COVID fund. Let's use a few billion here, a few billion there. We'll pump it into the schools and do gender theory and all this other stuff. At the end of the day, that's not what those funds were for. And a lot of 
people right now, and you saw a recent vote about the COVID, a lot of the politicians are saying, no, let's let's get that money back. Right. Okay? If you're not using it and COVID's done in terms of the emergency, get the money back. What bothers me with this list is how about we stop spending on things that have nothing to do with Americans, like Ukraine. Ukraine. Billions, well, hundreds of billions of dollars we've given. Like funding the cartel so they can funnel people into our country from all over the world through our border, devastating our country. Oh. Two million so far since the president got into office. Right. Now, on to the second big news, which you kind of just alluded to, this big kind of right wave we're about to have. House votes 419 to zero for declassification of intelligence on COVID-19 origins. Now, um, I mean, we just had, well, a great podcast that you should listen to, and I sent it to you today. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones was on Tim Dillon's podcast, and they talked the about- The frogs are gay. The <laughs> It is. It's a. It's an eye-opening uh, podcast, really. Mm -hmm. it, again, Republicans kind of knew what was going on, but when you see the actual video evidence that hasn't been out to the media, whether you like Alex Jones or not, that's one thing. Right. But when he shows you video evidence of something, mm -hmm. like Dr. Redfield in the um, CDC, CDC, mm -hmm. go watch that video. It will change your perspective on COVID completely. Mm -hmm. And it, we see that in the Senate now, right? All they just voted. A lot of Democrats and Republicans just fed, said, hey, I want all the information on COVID so mm -hmm. that we know. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like this week was kind of a groundbreaking week for this COVID and uh, January 6th. Now, I'm going to leave the COVID stuff to the scientists. Right. I'm just going to say go watch that video. Dr. Redfield gives a description on how it works and what happened. I mean, we're at the point where we know that it was a weaponized um He's Redfield is a virologist. Yeah, Fa Dr. Fauci was his boss, if you will, or a head of the NIH. Right. He's an immunologist. Immunologist. Okay. So as a virologist, he understands more about how viruses work, how they should work. An immunologist is more about how, how to, to deliver defend. it and how, how to to, right, yeah. to to work against these things. It's like attack versus defense right. in a video game. And what's interesting is not only the his opinion differed from what others said. He was completely shut out of the discussions from the top level people, which is odd because he was the head of the CDC. Yeah. Very, <laughs> so very, right very there, weird. bells and whistles should go off in terms of, you know, something's not right here. So yeah. I will say this. For those of us going back, mm, let's say, five to ten years, okay? Everything back then when you look at that was a conspiracy theory is all coming true. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of uh, politicians are realizing that now after this, so the COVID thing. And the other thing we want to talk about is we j Tucker Carlson mm -hmm. on Fox News just released video evidence of what we didn't see during the January sixth yeah. election. So er, election uh, January sixth insurrection was that two years ago? Now was that twenty twenty? Yes, yeah. it was right after oh, the so election. It was twenty twenty one. It was right after the election. I mean. This is evidence that this is video footage that the public was not allowed to see, and it completely mm -hmm. changes the argument of an insurrection. It completely yeah. changes everything. Yes. So again, that's another one you have to go see if you haven't seen it yet. Well, part if you of had that, any doubts beforehand, right. this pretty much clears everything. Well, and part of that video evidence too is something Darren Beatty's been talking about and did exhaustive. I mean, like mind numbing. You don't even want to read it because it's so. In, in depth about the um, the bomber. So on that day, there was a bomb planted right outside mm -hmm. where the vice president supposedly was. And whole story about that. It triggered a lot of things that day. Right. Well, again, I, that's there's one video thing. evidence there. We, we ha we've seen that video evidence. We, they're still looking for some of it yeah. because they won't release it. I, I'm going by, again, that might be true. I'm just going by what we definitively saw that is now mm -hmm. circulating on main media yep. because it's gotten so big that they can't stop it. Right. And the one that I saw that was the most damning was for the last two years, it was these people were all rioters. They were mm -hmm. awful people. If you go watch the video that they didn't release, mm -hmm. the guy, the shaman. Head, the shaman, the shaman. Q &I, shaman, I forget his name. Chan He's Chan saying, Chan hey, we're not going to video evidence. Yeah. So there's no... YouTube can't demonetize us for this because this is video evidence now, mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave it in the video. The, there's no, there was no, the whole media that CNN and even Fox News at the time was telling yeah. us completely wrong. 
That yeah. guy should not be in prison. That's right. After what he did. That's right. Given, I, I guess the law is you're not supposed to be in that building at all unless authorized. So I guess that's the legality. But it's usually a fine. It's not four years in prison plus He was whatever. escorted around the building by Capitol by police. police officers. There are video, so to videos, say you're not yeah. allowed in the building, you would have thought one of those police officers, officers yeah. they would have escorted him around him out. the whole building. Yes. Escorted. Yes. They, all the, everything that they told us on the news for the last two years was wrong. It mm -hmm. was false. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, props to Tucker Carlson for getting that out there. But yeah. everyone's like, oh, it's not true. It's edited video. Listen, as a video editor who's been doing this for 10 years, well, that's not edited video. Right. Props to Tucker Carlson. Yes. I mean, and probably I give so credit true. where it's due to Kevin McCarthy. Right? Yes, for bringing it up. But it was I will give credit this. to those 20 people that were crucified, and I use it figuratively, for holding up his election as Speaker of the House right. because they refused to, to vote for him unless he agreed to certain things. Yeah. And one of the things was the releasing of the videos when we get it. I mean, that was a side deal because we knew that will unravel that whole, whole story. And, man, I oh – God – Mr. Connell deserves a slap in the face for telling people, <laughs> if you're saying, hey, it was wrong of you to release that footage. Yeah. If, I was, if you're it. a Republican, you should look at Mitch McConnell as the most horrifying person for, for saying, hey, we shouldn't be showing evidence anymore that flips an agenda. Right. Like, what an idiot to right. say that. That guy right. should, I mean, you step down. Like, right now, just step right. down. Take that, your concussion. Now you stay understand, over there. understand the term rhino. That's a Republican in name only. Yeah, I know He's this goes the exact you. opposite of what we've been telling you for two years, but you shouldn't release that. Mitch McConnell, I mean. Uh, well, understand. Step the down. People in charge of security at the Senate and in the House. Yep. They work with the Capitol Police and they work with the people, the Capitol Police of the D.C. Police and the, the security for the government. Right. Who report to Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. and Mitch McConnell. Yeah. It's it's so you gotta wonder why when Terry Johnson, who is the Capitol Police officer, they've in, I think Tucker interviewed him subsequent to the first video release, when he said, "I asked for more backup, nobody got back to me." I know. I said so I they, needed they have, it. So to back that up, there's video evidence of uh, uh, so Alex Jones, mm -hmm. who everyone said he led the whole thing. Again, video evidence mm -hmm. of him saying, "Hey, we're not." going into the Capitol. Yep. That's not what we're here for. We're not causing violence. Video evidence. Again, I'm going to iterate that every time. Yep. Video evidence of this happening. And then he said that when he went to talk to police, police refused to give him help in the sense yeah. of um, they're trying to reach certain police chiefs inside to know yep. what's the right precautions. So there's a lot more to the story, and we're going to find out more probably as the years go by, unfortunately. Yeah. But this is by far the most damning evidence, which is why we're seeing a lot of declassification. Well, the previous president offered to have the National Guard. And we have Guard that phone call, too. Several yep. times. Through Cash Patel was yep. the Department of Everything that we have heard for the last two years has been completely a fabrication. But also, Everything. I mean, it's fabricated, but you ask yourself, well, why wouldn't they do it? And why wouldn't they let the police... Well, why do you think? Connect no, the dots. It's, yeah, that's And that's a, where the conspiracy theory becomes a plausible theory of, I don't understand. If you're Mitch McConnell on a day like that, wouldn't you want extra security? Or why wouldn't you get back to somebody and then cry about it after the fact that, oh, we were, we were left, you know, hanging here, right? It was a major day. I'm not saying that you needed the extra security, but if it was offered and you thought it was going to be such a crisis, wouldn't you take it, even if those people were standing around? Yeah. It, it, I, I'm going to leave a link in the description for the Tim Dillon podcast with Alex Jones. It is completely eye-opening. But keep in, in mind, every... the President of the United States just said this week that five people died that day. Five police officers five died police that officer. day. Yeah. It has been completely disproven several times over. Five police officers did not die that day. Mm -hmm. There is no evidence of that. Our past president said that? No, President Biden said it oh, this past yeah, week. I'm pretty sure that he said five past people president this past Biden week, said. I said. Yeah, okay? Yeah. This is a lie, an outright lie that they keep saying, and they've been saying it for two years, and people who have looked at the facts have said they did not die that day. It's like me making up some, oh, President Biden just went out and shot somebody. And I want to say it 50 times a day to try and make it true. It's not true. Yeah. <laughs> and you, can't, you can't have multiple people lying about it in order to make it a truth if there's no evidence. And we right. see that all the time with mainstream media. I'm trying to think of who it was. 
Oh, people that, every day yeah, will say, I never saw, I never heard that Officer Sicknick was fine that day. Well, now we have a video of him walking around that day. He was perfectly fine. Yeah. He died of a stroke the, two days after. Exactly. A stroke. So, you know, and then they'll go, I Which never knew that. Don't get me wrong. But. Right. And then when you <laughs> ask him, well, what, what news do you watch? And they give the name of the news. You're like, how many times you got to keep watching that same station to be this shocked? Is, this, <laughs> is, this is the wide awakening that we needed as a country not a not a not a group of people not a right or a left there's no hey who was right who was wrong this is damning evidence yes. video evidence we're not talking paperwork yeah video evidence of the complete opposite of what we were told for the last two years on both right. fox and cnn yeah thank god tucker carlson should go down as a hero for this shit because <laughs> now he's getting He's getting shit from his higher ups now for releasing this, right? Yeah. The, um, uh, I forget what the family's name is. Murdoch's. It is the, the Murdoch family, yeah. Murdoch Media. It, that's that's unbelievable. So, thank you, Tucker Carlson. Thank you, Alex Jones. I never thought I'd say that one, but <laughs> that's a that's an eye opener. So this is going to be yeah. It shouldn't matter where it comes months. from. You just want facts. Yeah. And you can see the, how yes. dangerous it is when they suppress facts. You know, we learned from the Hunter Biden situation, the current president would probably not be president if you believe the election was run fairly and people voted based on who they preferred. He would not be president because a huge percentage said, I wouldn't have voted for him if I knew about this laptop. A lot of the stuff, yes. it's That's why information is so important. And I'm more baffled by fellows. You're right. It's not you and me versus a Democrat versus a Republican. It's us versus our government. Yeah. It's we the people. That's how bad it has gotten, in my opinion. And it doesn't matter in government, Republicans, Democrats, whatever. What what you witness on a daily basis is something that all citizens like this J6 video footage, if you look at it with an open mind, if you believe something that day, one way or the other, and just look at the facts, not edited, nothing, whether it's come from Carlson or MSNBC, whatever, and it's not edited, that's the other side of it. How many times have they put videos up of President Trump talking, for instance, and they lop off the most important part where he says we're going to go peacefully down there. Yeah. Okay, that's the same as lying when you edit something to the point where you change the message. How many times do people have to look at that? Again, like the five believers. How many times do I have to tell you? Five believers didn't, didn't, didn't die. They'll still watch the same news and get right. their information from it's the same sources. It's unbelievable how stupid right. some people. Again, you can't fix stupidity, yeah. but at least you can freaking look in other places, like for the love of God. Well, or you don't censure me because you don't like what yeah, I'm saying, saying yeah. and you're saying I'm lying when I'm not. That's the problem. You know, If you think you're right, show me the facts. They, they can't. If I think I'm right, I have to show you the facts. Right. Um, I see you have a lot of stuff about the SVB, but I, well, uh, I pulled SVB, different articles yeah, about it to go into more. It's all about the same. Yeah, I didn't know how much so you want to talk wanna, about it. I didn't want to go too too deep because I feel like we covered a good portion of it. But I do want to talk about kind of an a, another big part of why the Silicon Valley Bank failed. Um, a lot of the Silicon Valley big companies moved uh, out of California. Great example of this, Elon Musk is planning to build his own town in uh, Texas, so around the new Tesla. Um, Tesla town? Yeah, Tesla town. That's what I hope he calls it that. That'd be sick. But uh, basically, this is a neat idea. So he bought 3,500 acres of land and is going to put more than 100 homes on uh, that land. I hope they're nice homes. Any waterfront? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How nice are these? Can they be sold? But this is We're really currently cool. in the market. It's nice to know that after all the shit that uh, he's been going through the last, it feels like a year now over Twitter and Tesla stock, at least he can still afford to do this and give these people housing, which is really nice. I think that's really cool. But I was wondering, what's your opinion on this one in the sense of the social aspect of Excuse me. Live, uh, everyone living kind of together, because I don't know. Well, I don't. These are all his employees living together. It's mostly employees, uh, different levels of employees. I don't know if it's main homes or like apartment style, mm -hmm. but it sounds like what he wants to do is uh, he wants to do all these housings, but it's not like per family housing. It's like, hey, we can fit thirty people in this building, thirty in mm -hmm. this one. Um, so kind of, kind of like small apartment style. Mm -hmm. Now I I always think of. Uh, like when we went my great grandmother's uh, place and how the only people you kind of know are the people around you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, hey, what'd you do today at work? And it's like, oh, work for Tesla again. I always wonder what the social <laughs> aspect of that is um, to 
uh, it doesn't say much about the actual area in the sense of how far are they from a gym, how far are they from a I'm trying to find the first groceries. one. Um, oh, I can't remember the name. We learned about it all when we were in history class. So when America entered the Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. right, or started it, yep. they had a small factory. And it was, I thought it was in Massachusetts, but it was definitely near a river because it was river run, powered by the river. And a lot of people left the farms to go work at this factory. Right. They needed a place to live. So they built housing near it so people could walk to work. Well, now people living there, they need to go get food because they can't hunt anymore. They can't grow it in their backyard. So a store sprang up. So that's when you started to see these urban cities start to grow in our country. So industrialization brought that about. What Elon Musk is doing basically the same thing. He's putting right. putting housing near where people work. Next thing you will see, if there's a town nearby, great. But if not, you're going to see businesses sprout up. It was also very common them. with uh, like during the gold rush. Remember during the mining? Yes, same thing. So they would yep. build entire towns around that mining, That's and right. then people would live there. Yep. I think there's one still in Nevada that. I think there's a Mr. Beast video on it. It's like an abandoned city. It's really cool. Uh, the old but, west, yeah. the whole old west. That was what all it's about. And there was no police force, so you had. You know, yeah. the Clint Eastwoods of the People world. People don't they realize, but a lot of those towns are still around. We yeah. just, like, they're just in terrible places. <laughs> yeah. Well, or some of them grew into major cities. Like, yeah. the ones in Nevada. Yeah. You know, the main but there's still there. a couple abandoned ones that are still, like, you got the saloon, you got the. <laughs> Uh, every, like, I think they use them for TV yeah. productions, movie productions. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Now there's all bullet holes and everything from blanks, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool. But I, I think it's a great idea. I just wonder what that lifestyle is like. Like, I wonder if that's the beginning of like the clockwork that you see in those futuristic movies where everyone's the same. I feel like when you get to that little area, it's just a hundred houses of you guys. <laughs> yeah, it could get a little tedious because yeah. you're living and working and doing everything. Yeah. You know, oftentimes. Tell me about was... your job. I work at Tesla too. Oh, <laughs> right. And back in the old days, there was a need because if it was a lot of young women, they couldn't live on their own. Right. It wasn't acceptable. It wasn't safe. So you needed like a community. Nowadays, you know, a lot of people don't want to live, work, eat, and everything with the same, you know, yeah. group of people. You got you to do more than just stay in your little bubble right, right? you want to get out and you know yeah. it can get pretty, pretty tedious and also you're making the assumption that only one person works yeah it doesn't help if this if your spouse works and they don't work at tesla now they got to commute to wherever yeah. so they got to make it cost effective for my, them my other guess is that it's not made for permanent living like i think these people have other places to go it's usually for like uh I mean, primarily it's probably the main workers like in that area. So yeah. yes, they can live there. But like when executives come who are in different states, I think it's oh, just so it's going to be that type of housing. Yes. Oh, so it's okay. kind of a come and go apartment style. Oh, I'm sure the hotel industry out there is thrilled about that. Oh uh, yeah, but hey, if he owns the land, there's yeah. not much they can do about it. So yeah, it's not like he's building on their land. <coughs> oh, it's man. true. Um, what else? What else? What was your other one? I know you had another one about. Well, I had a science. Well, I have two. Go ahead. The rare Chernobyl dogs. Oh, you know about Chernobyl? Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> Chernobyl was in Ukraine. Yes. Did you know that? I was not. I, I knew that, but then I forgot about it. So, in April 26, for your podcast people, 1986, there was a nuclear plant reactor that had a massive surge and released 500 dangerous radionuclides in uh, the air. There's a great series on HBO called um, Chernobyl. If you ever get a chance to watch it. It's pretty. It's pretty good, and it got good, very, very good reviews. It talks about what happened and the devastation of it. But the animals were left behind because mm -hmm. people couldn't take them. Right. Okay. So these dogs mostly had to fend for themselves, and there's not much food there because radiation got destroyed. Yeah. Right. They created a new rare dog over the 37 years, so they kind of inbred, and these dogs have longer limbs, thicker coats. An ability to survive. So it's interesting. Um, their genome is also different, which makes sense. Radioactivity Maybe, in the yeah. area, what they're eating and whatnot. But they built up an immunity to the radioactivity. If they're like able to survive. Thing. They're not quite sure how. Now, maybe the first few generations were very weak. We don't know, mm -hmm. right? It's been 37 years. Um, and remember, dogs don't live as long as humans, right? So yeah. 20 years or so. The nearest power plant... Um, they almost the ones that were nearest to the the main 
damage area, the power plant and the immediate area. They're very much like German shepherds, very similar to German yeah, shepherds. Yeah, what I'm seeing. Yeah. So they're wondering if, you know, German shepherds somehow mixed in. They're not quite sure if they had most of them. Um, they want to check these people. They uh, check these people. Check the these dogs. animals to check for radiation exposure. And I they can find use... out that they live to like fifty. <laughs> you know how fast people will bring those over just to they see did. if they're dogs. Yeah, they have them here in the U.S. So some yeah. of them have been adapt adopted here. Which I don't know. I'm a little bit like, how much is that wanna... dog worth? That's got to be an expensive dog. Maybe, well, maybe not, because when they brought them over, they might not have known that they were genetically right, different, and right. they thought they were rescuing them from this area. In 2019, many many younger ones were brought here to the U.S. Um, Oh, I have the rest of SBC at the bottom. So, yeah, it's it's a very interesting thing for scientists. You know, first you're like, oh, I don't want any radioactive dog here. But imagine the ramifications. If they survive that radiation, how would they – they're very interesting to test for things like treatments of, of um, illnesses. You know, how, what about their ge genome allows them to take in that much radiation and survive, which yeah. could help humans, right, if we're ever in a nuclear situation. Absolutely. Or for people that undergo treatments, like cancer treatments and whatnot. And just in general, what helped them to survive through that and what caused their, their genes to change? So they want to compare it to German shepherds from, say, parts of Europe that were not affected to see how much have they changed since then, yeah. this new breed. So I just thought that was really, wow, really that, cool. That is cool. Yeah. Speak There's pictures of them in the article, too, for people. Speaking of uh, animals, did you see the uh, raining worms in China? Did you see Ew, a picture no. of this? It's <laughs> actually kind of incredible. I want to know how this happens, but look at them on this car. Like, this was constant today. Millions and millions of worms. Yeah. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> did it come from rain? I, or I guess it, yeah, so I guess. Oof. I, I think what it is, and I'm just going to go based on just kind of a guess here, because they don't really give a great – like – China's so How big. How do they get up on the car? Do they fall from trees and stuff? Or they climb? So this is what they think happens. These worms go into these ponds that are just like off China's grid. Okay. There's tornadoes out there in uninhabited areas, of like human uninhabitants. Mm -hmm. So there's tornadoes, brings it up to the sky, and I guess that climate is able to push, like the wind just pushes the clouds oh. that fast. Oh. And uh, they're lightweight, so... It just starts raining worms. Oof. Isn't that wild? Oh, so the worms get get absorbed, absorbed because they're so light. Get... Oh yeah. wow! It's pretty oh, amazing. That's really from, the, from the so so the tornado brings it up, or to, I guess it's considered condensation. Like a, or yeah. The, yeah. The cloud is actually able because it's so dense. It's able to hold the weight of the worms, mm -hmm. right? And then it just drops them in that area. Oof. Like when it wherever it ends. <laughs> like isn't that wild? Gross. People are walking out with uh, umbrellas, dodging worms. Another but, reason why I have no need to go visit Asia. Dude, <laughs> I'm so I mean, it's pretty wild. I, I wish they had a better – again, that's a complete guess. I might just be making that up, but, yeah, like, yeah. they don't really do a great job as to explaining, explaining how this happens. They just have ideas about right, if it. If anybody on the podcast knows, feel free to write in. I'd love to hear. I, that's one of those things I'd love to see what happens. Cool. Okay. Uh, what's the so way by strong winds? So can, like, pick them out right out of the sky. <laughs> yeah. So they say – yeah, so I wasn't too far off. Mother Nature Network suggested that the worms are whisked away by strong winds before being dropped. Uh, so I guess they don't really get carried, but it's just that the winds are so strong wow. they'll stretch miles and miles yeah. until it gets to a major city. Because I don't know how they would land on a car. They can't crawl up that. No, Yeah, it literally comes from the sky. Literally raining worms. Oh, God. <laughs> we really have cool. cats and dogs. They have worms yeah, over exactly, there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's raining cats and dogs. Um, it's raining worms. What other little news do I have? Bird do I have heaven. Anything interesting? Oh, I thought this was cool. Vinyl outsold vinyl CDs or like vinyl records, yep, records outsold CDs for the first time since 1987. You know, I see the vinyl when I go to the stores. I'm like, what the heck? People are listening to vinyl records. You again. know what it is? I, I had to think about this. There's something about the cover art that people like yeah. a lot more than the CDs. And also vinyl, like nowadays the record players have gotten so good. Yeah. That you can't really tell a difference. I remember uh, my friend Mel. You remember Mel? She was yep. at our house that one mm -hmm. time. She had a vinyl record player mm -hmm. that she could put records on. It sounded just as good as any speaker. They make them now Bluetooth yeah. able. You can put yeah. them up on any speaker. So, um, yeah, I mean, some of those are kind of bullshit, right? And when you put the Apple phone in and it just plays, there's a different oh, oh. speaker and a record player. Okay. Hers was an actual, like, modern day record player that would. Um, 
if I remember correctly, it's been like six years since I've seen it, but if I remember correctly, it was just a giant speaker. It was built like an old 60s version, like the old model ones even earlier, but it would still play modern day music through a record. It was really nice yeah. to hear versus like a crappy CD. Like well, CDs aren't that good because they don't advance those anymore. We don't need CDs. And some people like the imperfections in the vinyl recordings. Like it makes it yeah. more realistic. Yeah, but then you hear like a if you hear a real vinyl, it sounds like shit. Yeah, it's like shh. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. So I if saw I that. heard it, my whole youth was vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> we grew it's up with fun. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but nowadays I think they're just so much better because there is a certain art to that. Whereas with CDs, I mean, we don't even use CDs anymore. Most computers don't come with CD drives. Yeah, it's true. Or disc drives. So they they stopped doing the advancements. I don't know what you would use a CD for. We were anymore. watching. Uh, uh, Dad put it on last night very briefly. The uh, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Talking classic. about one of their albums from ages ago. You can go your own way. And the guy doing the, uh, I guess the synthesizer. Whoever the the producer was who records the music with the board that they use. Right. Can I tell you, they sounded like crap, like a high school yeah, band. And when he terrible. starts working those dials and stuff, you're like, wow, I could have been a recording star with somebody like that. Oh, my God. You they ask, do so so this is I'm going to get a lot of crap for this on like TikTok <laughs> or whatever. But I've seen so many clips of – actually, that's a good topic we could talk about. But uh, I see a lot of clips of how these TikTok musicians do their music, and it's all just literally – hand manipulating yeah. every audio bit so in other words they have no uh, okay i'm gonna make an exaggeration here but they don't really have that much talent if any right. they just sing and then they like however it, bad it is right. and then they just alter it now i'm not saying there's not talented people on tiktok but i would say it's a lot easier to pretend to be a great musician or singer yeah now than it has been ever and now my question that I want to lead this into is um, do you think do you think that the mainstream musician is kind of dead? And what I mean by that is when was the last time a truly talented singer, like truly talented singer was mainstream, like a new singer? You know what I mean? Because I hear all these TikTok stars, they have one good song and then you find out that. They're really not that good at singing talent wise. They just made a one good song. Like there's no when was the last live singer that was good? Not Rihanna, we know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a live. Good songs. Yeah. Um I would say well, Louis Capaldi. It's, it's very maybe, interesting because you had like Christina Aguilera came out at the same time. But they had as the Britney talent. Spears. Yeah. Well that's what I'm saying. They had the talent to sing. No, no uh, let me let me say that. But, there's a difference between Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears. Mm. Britney Spears is all synthesizer. She she was they took her right. and they made. She was like her. the first of the of a kind though. Well, right? but they all that, came out around time? the same time. I mean, they were all in the club. Justin Timberlake, same yeah. thing. But he was in the boy band, so that the guy band, so it was a little different. But he's got a talent. He can dance and can sing. Yes. Right? Nowadays, what I'm saying Britney is, Britney Spears could dance, but there's a difference right. in the vocal talents or vocal abilities of Christina. Now, I'm no fan of Christina Aguilera. But I would say people like that, they can hold their own. You know, like they can sing yeah. anything. And that's usually the test. If they can come out and sing any type of music and do it well, like Lady Gaga, right? Yeah. Never a big fan of Lady Gaga, but I'm impressed by she's her a, she's singing. She's a talent. She can sing. Right. sing she yeah. has a great ability to, to sing any type of song. And she branched out and started doing it. Unfortunately, they start with the d disco dance pop, blah, blah, blah stuff right. all of them do that they get they make a name they make their money and then yeah. they start venturing La into yeah, other La areas lady gaga is incredibly talented and i mean you can't argue right. that but that's and, what i'm you, yes. an answer to your question there are some pop singers now that the stuff that made them famous is garbage or it's a cookie cutter crap that's synthesized and everything that gets them a name and the music producer production companies they know this they package these people if they're semi-decent and they've got the right face, right look, whatever, they package them. They put the synthesizers in, yep. they get them a good producer, they give them some music that other people write, and right. they become a Britney Spears. What, what I'm saying is I don't think that works anymore. Right? I can't think of the last person, unless you're truly talented, which, again, I also don't think we've had in a while. I think the last one was maybe either Louis Capaldi uh, or... Well, I think Ed Sheeran's very talented. Well, yeah, but he's been around for a decade at oh, least. Oh, well, I don't yeah. know the most current 
you know, I couldn't what do you t- mean? But, Somebody brand new. Yeah, but, brand have, new? but there's a lot of people that have like one hit song and then you never hear of them. Again, oh, yeah. That's always right? been around. One hit wonders. Yeah, one hit wonders, of course. But at least they had a talent to actually like they could sing one song. Maybe I don't know. Not all of them. <laughs> it's yeah. Some of the one the hit ones, wonders were. Yeah. You know. But they also had. But I guess what I'm saying is they ha- usually those one hit wonders had at least something to bring to the table so that they can at least get a record deal or something. Nowadays, like these TikTok kids, since it's completely fabricated, well, and there's yeah, so that's many a, that's now. That's a whole different world. Yeah. But yeah, like the 60s and 70s, if you were any kind of musician, even a one-hit wonder, you had to stand on your own because you didn't have the mechanical stuff you have today. Mm. You had to perform on a stage at Woodstock or wherever, right? And you just brought your, your guitar and you sang in your band. Nowadays, yeah, the, the one-hit wonders, you know, yeah. it's a synthesized kind of they can doctor it they can do whatever they want to start to make you able to perform right. but I, I i you know a good singer when they perform live and, or and when they can do other people's music yeah. and it's i can't tell good. i'm not gonna name any names but there's one famous tiktoker I, I wouldn't say famous but definitely a verified artist has unbelievable songs right mm-hmm. gets on stage terrible <laughs> right? yeah so oh, yeah. so it's that edited you go oh, now yeah. again my definition of terrible might be different from someone else's but i think most people who see this will agree like hey this is not what i've been seeing for the last year on tiktok and then you go on a live stage and, and, and like just get off you're, you're terrible well i'll right? say something controversial maybe your followers won't like it but i don't think taylor swift is a great singer she's nothing special what oh. she is though is she's a very good writer She's a very good musician in that sense. Like she puts I'm adding the music. Taylor Swift. I want you to know I'm going to make sure she sees this. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but, you know, she doesn't have a wide vocal range, but she's very creative she with her music, so, and she has good yeah. producers who help her. I think there's a point, though, where she got so famous where um, my love story was her big song. That was yeah, the that's what she started. But also, out. you have to remember she was like 16 at the time when that right. happened. And that's what I'm yeah. saying. She's a very talented writer. She's very attractive, right? right? That yep. helped a lot. And if she was an ugly girl, she probably never would have performed <laughs> any of her songs. She would have been a writer. Yeah. And she would have been the one that the production companies would take her songs and give it to, you know, right. the Christy Aguilera, the Britney Spears, and make well, them recording Well, that's what Lady Gaga artists. did, right? Lady Gaga, remember, she started as a writer for Britney Spears, I believe. Okay. And then she was like, I'm going to do my own. And then Poker Face comes out, and it right. was... I mean, the biggest song from when I was in, like, eighth grade to the end of high school. It was huge. Right. But, like, Taylor Swift's songs, even though now she does some duets and whatnot, they're very creative. But it's not like you listen to her and say, oh, wow, she really – I didn't even know it was her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Lady Gaga's done different things. Christina Aguilera's done different things. They still do their pop and whatever. But Uh, I I just don't think she's a great Here's the difference, though, between – and this is just because you're not on TikTok – when Taylor Swift goes on stage and she sings one of her songs, I know that's Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, without looking. Yeah. These TikTok kids, mom, like that guy I was just explaining to you, his videos on TikTok yeah. sound one way. Yeah. I couldn't tell you that that was the same guy on stage. Yeah. That's how different it is because of all the editing. Well, so but I think, also, yeah. even in the old days, when you heard a band on a radio or, or in the record, right? And then you saw them live. Mm-hmm. Very different. Some not good. Yeah, and that was real eye opening because you'd be like, oh, "This guy," and they usually didn't go very far. Yeah, others it was different, but it was good because it was live, and that's when live became. They could do a whole other record with just their live recordings because they were good at it. Yeah, usually it was the better trained musicians, the more serious ones, not right. the one hit wonders. And now I feel like the market itself for music is so flooded because of TikTok, and the truth truth be told, there's just not that there's not that many talented singers who can just naturally go up there and Well, sing. I guess I don't understand TikTok. Well, are these just people that decide to record a song well, and they post it on TikTok? It's, it's two things, yes. So okay. it's two things. A lot of people just do covers of songs, mm-hmm. and they're fantastic covers, and then when all the editing's gone and it's stripped away, it's just terrible. Like, it's okay. usually bad. It's they, I've seen before and afters. Um, so it's not that TikTok is... It's become too easy to post... How do I put this? It's not that it's too easy to post, right? I do believe that everyone should be posting if they truly love something. Mm-hmm. But you're o- they're overflowing the market with pretending to be a good singer through editing. Okay. Right? There's very few people that I see on TikTok that can go up there unedited and sing. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm saying that because of all the editing, I think you're going to see a lot of one-hit wonders mm-hmm. because once they have enough songs that they can go on stage, 
It's not. It's not going to be pretty far. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Now, could you make the argument that? And the other reason that I say um, that you're going to stop seeing the mainstream singers, m the money and the revenue that comes from comes to. Okay. Sorry. Let me phrase that. Musicians make their money from ticket sales, mm -hmm. merchandise, and record deals. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though record deals are pretty shitty to begin with. If you're just a TikTok person who can make music, get it on Spotify and make mm -hmm. a little bit of money. If you're not doing concerts, you're not going to see that big money that gets you famous. And I think that's kind of the Well, yeah, difference. but you have to spend money for concerts. So you have to have a record yeah. label that's willing to put up the funds for it and investors to put up the funds to finance you to go on the road yeah. and do what you have to so do. So that's what I mean. It's it's I, I don't know if we will have big singers anymore because of how over – well, no, that's not true. We'll, we'll, there will be talent, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to be harder to find the real talented people. I think it's going to be not on TikTok. I think it's going to be on like an America's Got Talent or something. Yeah, I, I don't know that. When you tell me about TikTok, I'm sure there's some people out there that have to do that for a living if they work for I'm a sure there's company. Uh, again, don't get me wrong. Like, uh, it's great talent. Uh, 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 Taylor Acorn, I think, is a great one. She's kind of like a emo s s punk rock singer who – she she can sing. I've seen live footage of her singing. She sounds exactly the same. Oh, how about like here's one, Billie Eilish. <laughs> yeah, the, she has a very distinct sound. She can sing though. I'll give right. her that. I've seen her sing. Here's the problem with Billie Eilish, and I've never I think heard I said sing this on, anything other than I, her particular. I said style this on song. a stream once, and listen, I'll take the shit for this. <laughs> Billie Eilish's music is god awful, in my opinion. Yeah. She can sing better than most singers. I've seen her sing songs that mm -hmm. aren't hers. She can actually hit crazy notes. Okay. So she's talented. Yeah. Her music's awful. Yeah. Like most of it, like the, her big one was uh, Bad Guy or whatever, which is, the, the song's terrible. It's eight-year-olds like it. But it doesn't show off her voice at all. None right. of her songs show off her voice. Right. She has an incredible voice that people can only dream of having. Right. But so that's why I go, what do you, it's a waste of talent in my opinion. Well, but she made her money with that particular genre, made a name for herself. But she hasn't now done anything since. Well, but she, I think she was trying to get into acting. But if she chooses mm -hmm. to, she might get more into, you know, next you might see her do, oh, the classic is they always do a Christmas album. That's another thing that propels you. <laughs> I can't, I, Everybody does it's kind of weird album. for her to do a Christmas album because of her genre of music. Because she worships Satan. <laughs> that, would be like, <laughs> no, that would be like Kiss doing a Christian album. No, I album. know, but they, they, that, that's usually the mark of a superstar. They do the Christmas album. Christina Aguilera has yes. one. Um, but again, those are people Ariana that can Grande. sing. I can't imagine. No, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. When you cross over and you come out of the thing that propels you, mm -hmm. if you think about it, Britney Spears is an example. She was the hot, 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 hot with her particular side. She's never She's come out of it. Though. Exactly. Yeah. She's never come out and done that crossover, right. that different style like Mariah music. Carey. Mariah Carey can sing, sing. Yeah, she has a very good voice. She's like the Whitney Houston, has a powerful voice. They yeah. are Celine Dion. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, these People are who are so undeniable. What right. I'm saying is I don't think – I think it is too hard now to find someone undeniably talented – because of the oversaturation well, of the market. Well, I think it's the opposite. I think it's too easy for garbage. The yeah, talent, same thing. the it's, talent yeah. is out there. It's just you're flooding the, it with a lot garbage, of garbage. Yeah. That's fair. And somebody's got to feed through all that. But the only way that, that you're going to be see, able to find the real talent is the person that can get on stage and sing, not the TikTok kid that edited the shit out of a song to make it sound good, which you see more often than well, not. Well, right, but that's how it's always been. So you know, uh, uh, all these music production, it's like. Um, Sports talents. They send people out. They go to nightclubs. They go to, all over. They do word of mouth. They go to places and they see oh, uh, people perform. You mean? Um, and they sign them to record labels right. and they bring uh, them in and they, you know, they have the scouters. You mean scouters like for sports? Same thing in the music industry. They do it constantly and people send them tapes or yes. recordings or whatever. So it's it's they don't necessarily have to go to TikTok. Right. I don't know why people well, would waste think time people on TikTok if they're way. very good. If they're not good, you go on TikTok right. because nobody's listening to yes, you. Yes, that's what I mean. So, And then what happens is they, they're not good and then they edit the crap out of it to make it sound good, right? Right. So maybe if they're that good, a production company, if they don't know better, may say, all right, come on in, we'll have you sing. Or send me a demo without anything. They'll ask for a specific type of song. And they'll wean them out right away. They don't yeah. even contact them back because there's just too many people they have to I, I mean, hear. Ariana Grande is another example of someone who was so talented and no one knew it, knew it until she started singing. And everyone was like, 
You're a better singer than you are right. an actor. That's right. So she that's what I mean. Undeniable talent. I don't think you'll see that anymore. The biggest TikTok star to come out in the last like year or two is that kid, kid Loudry or whatever. He did that song with Justin Bieber. He's not that talented. Well, he can sing, I right. guess, but he's not like a talent. He's like a right. rapper, like a sort of right. pop. But the, you know, it's it's easy to say, but I I do believe that we there's always talented people yes. being born. But I think it's and, gonna be harder to find them. Well, I don't know because there's more avenues to do it. it. There's a lot. It's not harder to find them. It's just that, like I said, there's a lot of garbage out there that mm-hmm. crowds it out. But you'll always have talented people just because everyone's born with skills and whatnot. And those wonderful singers, the person's out there. There's another Ariana Grande out there. There's another, you know, yeah. they're, they're young kids right now with the personality and talent and drive and everything else. So, you know, but that distinct unusual voice i do believe that every remember a lot of them come from choirs yeah especially the old motown singers they were all in their church choirs and that's how they developed their voices and that's how they get their range and they could sing anything look yeah. at um also like somebody like faith hill she was a country singer for the longest time and then she transferred over and i think swift did the same thing miley she, cyrus cousin. from disney right they, tra- they, they do else? their mainstream i mean well ariana grande is another great example demi lovato yep but, about Demi but, Lovato, she's she, she she's was, a weird one, but I think she can sing. I'm I don't know. Sure she, I think sing. she was more hype than Selena so, Gomez. Definitely can't sing. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, she's one that not, stuck to acting. She doesn't. Yeah. I don't know what she's been doing since, but she's on a TV show that was or a oh, series and all uh, one of the online series, Murder in My Building or something like that. It was. Uh, it's actually really? getting good reviews. Really? Yeah, she's with two very good strong her. actors. I can't remember, but. Anyway, uh, what's this about Girl Scout okay, cookies? Okay, now, now we're going to have a real panic. Okay? <laughs> Girl Scout cookies, I didn't know this this was going on. The Girl Scout uh, Girl Scouts, they use a company called Little Brown Bakers, Little Brownie Bakers. It's owned by Ferrero, as in Ferrero Rocher, the chocolate company. Okay. I think there's some sort of scam going on. I don't think they want to do the Girl Scout cookies anymore. I don't want to what? start controversy, but they had a weather-induced power outage at the Kentucky plant, which halted the production. Okay. They've had inventory woes. They've been creating shortages. They're claiming a mechanical issue was going to delay the Samoans this year. That's I crisis. like the Samoans. I know it's, it's a it's a problem. Okay. What about the grasshoppers? <laughs> Tell me, are the grasshoppers <laughs> okay? No, that that's Keebler. That's not Girl Scout cookies. Oh really? I yeah, they they, that's the... a Keebler. No, they have the Thin Mints. Hey, hey, potato, potato, right? I know. Well, if I was is... to blindfold the ten people in here and give them one of each, I doubt they're noting. Well, <laughs> a difference. there's something to be said for that. But this is the third year in a row with slow production. Get the hint, okay? Seventy-five oh, percent of their cookies come from. This company, the LBB, okay? 25% comes from the ABC Bakers. They haven't had any issues, okay? Mm. She granted a smaller amount, but they haven't had issues. Now, LBB is claiming, you know, we've been actually doing, we produced more in the past year than we've ever had before. And even though we've had these setbacks, we're still doing much better than in years past. Now, before everybody panics, what is still available online, okay? The Thin Mints. The Adventure Fulls, which I have no idea what that is, and I'm intrigued. And the s'mores. S'mores. Not enough s'mores. We don't, I was thinking this today. We don't eat enough s'mores here. I'm not a fan of s'mores. Shh. I don't like marshmallow. <laughs> Ooh, I almost just swore at you. <laughs> what but do you mean you don't like marshmallow? This is an aside on the, sec- and choose? On the secondary market. Okay. Usually, <laughs> second, the secondary market. like the market. black market? No, the secondary market. Hey, you got to you got you want some Girl Scout cookies. Listen, <laughs> because of the shortage, normally they're about $5 a box. You can get them on eBay for $35 a box. Whoa. <laughs> secondary market. God damn. Okay. It's that bad. But the Girl Scouts are pissed because, you know, this is how they fundraise. And what meaning do these girls have in their life if they can't beat the other girls <laughs> Yeah. I'm just trying to beat Bridget's <laughs> d- 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 score. I'm going to get that patch this year. Oh, they, they pit these girls up against each other like nobody. What did you business. say was the name of that? Uh, the off, off Adventure Fools. Adventure Full Girl Scout. Cookies. It sounds like a, a toon cartoon thing. You know what we should do? We got we got to get like a bunch of them and try them on, on <laughs> the podcast. What are the Adventure Fools? Oh, that. <laughs> Pancake likes it. That's a good cookie. <laughs> that's a good look at this thing. Wow. It's like uh that's the adventure full. Um, I don't know what what's it is. in the middle? Peanut butter? I think so, maybe. I could tell you. Let's see, let's see. They they have a description. <laughs> <laughs> Indulgent brownie inspired cookies. 
topped with caramel flavored cream and a hint of sea salt. Order, mm. order, order, order. Cha-ching, <laughs> <laughs> cha-ching. Well, right. you're going to have to wait because it's back ordered, okay? It was made by the LBB, the Little Brownie Bakers. It might take a while to get it. Come on, girl. I used to like the Samoans, so that disturbed me a little bit. How much would it cost right now to get an assortment of Girl Scout cookies? And it's funny. Your dad almost went and bought some today outside of Five Below. He said, I thought about it, thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, those girls must have thought you were weird walking to the car, walking back. Walking to the car, walking back. <laughs> oh, might have to bite the bullet on this one for 65 <laughs> for, mm. Girl Scout cookie cases, 12 boxes for 60 bucks. You sure that there's a shortage? I was going to say, let's Another do Another run on this. SVB. People might, take the money out to, to buy the Girl Scout cookies. For, we might have to take the... Any donations this week will go towards the, <laughs> the Girl Scout cookies for next week just yeah. to try them out. But We're going to weigh 500 pounds on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it for those goddamn Samoans. <laughs> Uh, what other ones do I have? Um, Dad's, oh, gonna, th- Dad's gonna be yelling down from upstairs. Hey, enough <laughs> with the cookies. <laughs> you, what do you mean you ate two boxes today? Who ate the box of cookies? Yeah. I was saving those. What? Who's the enabler? That's his new line. <laughs> Who's the enabler? <laughs> Uh, just uh, so this was a uh, this is that <laughs> we I- find him in the kitchen eating a whole carton of Vienna milk <laughs> junk by himself in front yeah. of the TV. God, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Um. So this is. I, we but should, we love you. We should start another new segment called "I Called This," because <laughs> this is another one I called last podcast. Right? <laughs> Scammers are creating fake GPT and Bing crypto tokens. Remember, uh, I said yeah. this was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, I'm like an oracle at this point. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, scammers are now trying to do Speaking exactly of what cookies. I said. Yeah. Remember that from Matrix? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Oracle eat the cookie and you forget everything? Go ahead. Uh, is it the cookie or is it the red so pill blue cookie. pill? No, she remember. made a cookie. To be honest, I don't remember. Oracle with the cookie. She was baking the cookies. Yeah. Eat the cookie. I don't remember. Go um, ahead. So what's what's the... Basically, uh, they're using the open AI chat GPT to make algorithms to make bitcoins. Mm-hmm. So they're artificially making non-backed cryptos that they can put up a fake number because they're... Okay. Let's get into software real fast. So when you when you create a Bitcoin, it has to set the number of what the price is going to be for it. So you do a set price. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's within the software. So even though, like, there's think about if how do I put this? Is that you with those? So there's there's a right now Bitcoin is twenty thousand. There's a part in that software that tells you what it is worth. So it's kind of like a failsafe for fluctuation. Mm-hmm. Like it'll determine the number. It doesn't change anything. It's just saying this is the number of what it's worth right now. Okay. So if someone was to uh, do a purchase of the hash rates. Yeah, the market value, if you will. Yes. So it's not physically changing the price of the money. It's not like you can go in there and set it. Right. It's what it's valued at. It's just at what it's valued at, right? Mm-hmm. The, the algorithm is supposed to determine that. The On this, they are taking the open AI GPT software and basically artificially determining that pr- determining that price. So, it's not astronomical like 2000 or 20000 I mean. It's usually within a couple dollars, so like oh, let's okay. say it's $2, sure. But if you get enough demand and population, if I say if I say it to $3 and I tell everyone to buy and then I drop the price, right? So that now it's even less, I can pump it. So now it's five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars. Oh, that's so right. that's that's, that's, that's a it, recipe yeah. for disaster. So you're gonna be that guy that's watching your <laughs> fake coin that you just yes. got. It's go, it's skyrocketing. Yeah. Start buying in, guys. Right? right, right, right. It's a way of creating that noise, yeah. So that people buy into it, and all of a sudden, this guy has all that money because there's no coin back. Like there's no um, um, wallet, I guess. Yeah, no back. For where it it's, up. yeah, there's no back. So the guy just got all your money yeah. that all your friends just invested into. Yeah. So I, 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 the price of it's worth X amount of dollars, but I set it low. Yeah. To sense, you just bought three hundred dollars worth of it. Bring it up, even though it's a fake. So then you go, oh, I'm gonna sell. Right. It's not real money. Right. So that's how they get you. So it reveals that. Isn't that kind of exactly what SBX did with their FBX? <laughs> FBX uh, did. F- F- 
FTX. FTX did. With we just, their, we just they mixed pumped Sam Bankman Free. I know. We threw it all FTX together. The whole yeah. thing together. The Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> Sam Frank SVB. Token, um, yeah. Yes, to a certain extent. But yeah. that's like a major level. Yeah. Whereas these are smaller levels. Like usually they're only getting maybe 100 people buying in. Whereas the other one. That one. FTX was a little. F, uh, SB, dear God. What are you Sam doing Bankman, FTX. 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 Um, failed because it was more of a brokerage that was using its own coin. These guys are literally making a coin that has no financial backing and just yeah. has a fake financial backing. Yeah. And so. they wonder why the cryptocurrency industry is going to be regulated so fast yeah. the head's going to spin. Exactly. You do this, this is stuff. for something that we don't want government touching our Bitcoin and getting involved in Bitcoin. This is how you p force it into government hands. Because well, it and has also to be this, the Silvergate crypto that that failed okay yeah. when you have that happen it it's a spotlight and we didn't really wanted... talk about silvergate but that was another that's a big crypto bank that i failed. mentioned it earlier yeah. it failed and that okay. was part of the reason why a lot of they had a lot of assets at svb another yeah. group that pulled a lot of money out because it was losing money yeah I, it's that's a we're again i don't want to sound like an armageddon channel here but i mean we're going down some slippery paths here mm -hmm. and i can't blame government for this i blame people who are trying to make essentially Ponzi schemes that are pushing it into government's hands so that they go, okay, I guess we have to regulate it. No, well, I'll blame government in the sense that they are too much into our personal finances and investors were looking for alternatives to keep the government out of every bit of business. You know, for the average person, and now they're starting to get into the average person's um, business. Okay, so we're gonna come full circle today. Like the J6 people when they were going into people's bank accounts to see where they were on that day to find out if you were there. That's, that's none that's of weird, their business yeah. going into people's accounts. That shit so China you, would do. Right. So now you wonder why they come up with currencies like cryptocurrency to keep the governments, plural, out oh. of it. And now you know why people put money into Swiss bank accounts or they put it off the Cayman Islands. They don't want to pay the taxes, but they also don't want the government – you know, looking at everything you do and looking for ways to take that money yeah. through taxation or regulations or whatever. So then you wind up getting a cryptocurrency, but then, you know, they take it too far. Yeah. <laughs> and then the people start saying, oh, you got to start regulating it. Yeah. You know? Which is exactly, it's such a double edged sword in the Ooh. sense of you don't want them to regulate it, but you're starting to realize it has to be regulated somehow. Uh, especially if we're getting fake coins at this point, like the OTC market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know if regulation is that technically regulated. I don't even. I have to ask. Yeah, anyone there are some regulations There's certain rules, over but the a lot of those are like Kenny tells me about all the fake, um, pump and dumps that yeah. are on that market, and I'm like, how? There, you said there's regulations. He's like, yeah, it happens. I'm like, how's that get? How does that well, get through? Well, you know, let's be honest. There's even on the most regulated and the most elite and pristine Harvard markets, you know, run by these Harvard people, right. they well, have their like own SBA. schemes, right? Yeah, they do SBA. their own schemes. They have their ways of getting around, you know, a lot of things yeah. that when you're working with institutional dollars, you can get away with a lot of stuff. They are regulated, however, and there are rules <laughs> in place. Doesn't mean the rules are followed, but they do exist. Yeah, it's such a shame. Speaking of uh, last one for me, this one's slightly gaming, slightly not. This one kind of affects you too, Discord. Yeah. So Discord's new AI features aren't going down well. So two things that Discord did this week. They launched it on the PS5, okay. like PlayStation. The other thing that they did was they added to the servers um, – and so AI if bot, you have like Discord on that, that allows you to play with other people. Well, on Discord's other just a chat system, so it allows us to chat together. So when I call my friends, right, did, weren't we you able to do that before in the PS5? Yeah, but you can only do it with other PlayStation players. Now with Discord, oh, you can okay. do it over PC, okay, gotcha, over gotcha, whatever. Gotcha. Okay. So if I'm playing on my PS5, I can still talk to the guys during the UFC fights. But okay. what's weird is it's only like half of Discord. <laughs> so what I mean by that is, so we have a server, right, for the Cake Shop mm -hmm. podcast and the YouTube channel. We have a server, and you could do whatever you want on that server. With PS5, it's only the calling. So right then oh. there, it's like, well, all you just did was make a chat system a that chat no one's really going to use, right? right? So right then there, kind of weird for them to do. But the other thing that they did, and th this one doesn't bother me as much, but so they made their own chat G bot, like a GPT for Discord, to help with the server. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do it. There's a couple reasons that it's nice. So for us, it's nice for regulations. Like if you don't have any mods, we're not a big enough Discord to really bother with moderators. So people who can pay attention to the chat when I'm not paying attention. So mm -hmm. if someone posts something like super racist or something, right. 
usually a moderator will go in and take that person out, but this bot does that for us, oh. which is a good feature, yeah. right? If it is, but they're like, hey, do you want us to spice up conversations? Do you want us like they want to get too involved? Oh in yeah, this bot. it's hmm. like we don't need all this. That's right. Now. I also don't feel like the features that an AI bot does is anything too special compared to what I can just do. Right. I don't know any Discord server, even the massive ones, that are doing that many big changes that you need a specific AI for it. But on the flip side of that, there are some channels that have a lot of smaller bots, so mm -hmm. ones that aren't as sophisticated. Yeah. This kind of just brings all the bots together. Then it's useful because then it's just one bot that does everything right. rather than 20 bots that each do different things. Right. But given it's kind of again another double-edged sword if there's only certain things that i want to like let's say i have a music bot i just want to touch the music bot and change some stuff right. not the other 19 bots can't do that with the ai one that well right right as far as i know maybe i'll get better but again this is to me this is the classic let's make a bot just to make everyone happy right chat gpt again it's this is actually a use case for it but it's mm -hmm. like you didn't need to use it on this right. and you're forcing it on us right right and fortunately, you can opt out of it, which is what we did. Um, but could lesser experienced podcasters find it beneficial because they don't know what they're doing? Um, it, it's not, it's not so much a podcasting thing, right? It's just a server for us. So my, ours isn't really uh, specifically that's true. for, okay, so just for the podcast. There's a section on it for the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's mainly everything. Okay. So for us, I've already categorized it, organized it so that it's separated. A bot's not really going to do that. The bot's really only good for a moderation tool. If you have thousands and thousands of people in the Discord, there's a chat going 24-7. Oh. Someone's posting crazy crap in the gotcha. Discord. That's what the moderating bot's for. Does so, that happen that often that you have that many people? It, oh, yeah. There's oh. there's Discords that – like the big YouTubers, the huge yeah. ones, I mean they have millions of people in their Discords. Oh, I didn't know that people were on – Oh like, yeah. literally that way on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, we have people that hang out on ours. People post memes all the time in ours. Oh. But, um, like, ours is set up. I won't show you ours, but we have, like, ours se is separated from the podcast and the YouTube channel. So, it, for us, it's not a problem because we only have a total of, like, 50. Are we under 50? We might be over 50 people at this point. Let's see. Oh. I can't yeah, see but it. still, I didn't realize people were doing the Discord. Yeah. So with Discord, um, when you have a lot of people and you no, can't... Wait a minute. How could they be on Discord if we record ahead of time? Well, they post questions ahead of time, right? They post throughout the week. So if they have oh, questions... Oh, so they post it through yeah. Discord? Yeah. That's where uh, we get our, oh, our questions okay. and stuff. Hmm, okay. We have a... <sighs> I didn't know how you did it. I thought you did it like through paint, through your yeah, like so your these are, this and is the general. post it like they usually do. So this is ours. And then these are the memes that I told you everyone's been posting. And then the recording channel, voice channel, stream announcements, game ideas, the speed run recommendations. Mm -hmm. This is the YouTube stuff. So this is where I post new videos. And then the podcast questions. So these are podcast questions and these are the hotcakes. But this is your whole your whole site. This is the this whole is one. This is not for, just Cake Shop. This is just, yeah, this is just our Discord for the podcast. Oh, it is for this. And yes. So right here is the podcast questions. Okay, podcast and what else to use that this for? This is my other YouTube stuff. So like, oh, that's uh, what I thought. I okay, videos. yeah, it wasn't just. So like when I go into new videos, mm -hmm. I post. So these are the last two. Here's the Spotify version of the podcast, and then here's the YouTube one. So oh, okay. So you, oh, I see. That way okay. it's just a main hub for everything. Okay. Uh, because one day, eventually, when we have hopefully someone who could work for us or with us, I can separate the two channels, and then I don't have to deal with the cake shot stuff because I just can't manage all that. It's too much. Oh. So uh, I'd like to separate the channels at some point, but probably no time soon. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot. But – Unless we win the lottery and I can hi hi <laughs> hire someone. <laughs> I'm done that cheap. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, that's really all I had left. I did, we don't yeah. have any hot takes this week. We're a little – I know you have to go pick up Michael pretty soon, so I didn't want to make it go any longer. We're mid at 18. We'll cut it short a little bit. Um, I'll probably put all of that on YouTube. I'm not going to censor it. Minute 18. Hour 18. Eight, hour 18 is yeah. what I meant, yeah. Um, what does that mean, a minute 18? <laughs> I meant to say an hour 18, not a minute 18. But, uh, yeah, so we'll end it there. The only things I have to promote, so obviously the podcast, uh, this comes out Monday. So um, podcast last week, if you haven't seen that one, go check that one out, as well as Sons of the Forest was Wednesday. Friday was Wulong. Uh, nope, that's a lie. 
I don't talk. Honestly, I don't even remember my videos <laughs> at this point. I post too much. <laughs> you so can let, write it down. Let me just do the future stuff. Isn't oh, that what that board's for? It is, but the... <laughs> to your point. So, <laughs> but... I don't know which ones went out. The hell does he have a board for if he doesn't use the damn board? I don't know. Because those are – so here's the way this works. I'll show this. Maybe I'll send a picture and post it in. But the way it works is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Those aren't like the order of videos. That's the slot. Like that's the file that it's saved under. Okay. So that's literally how many video editing files I have for videos. So it's not actually in the order. So I know that – but Rula, you got two freaking boards Wednesday. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What well, do you mean a third like, board? That one's for like, um, like your thoughts of the day. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> uh, this is a speed buzz. This one I know because this one's in order. So I know that tomorrow Sunday, uh, um, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time comes out. That's the speed run. These I don't remember. So <laughs> I think. Yeah. They haven't changed. That's oh, wait, this is last week, right? Yes. Yeah, so. The action forest. What was Sons of the Forest? Clips. Oh, wow, that was last week. Oh, wow. Incredibles that were not so incredible. I I redid that speed run and I actually did it a decent time. Oh. I only lost the. Oh, so it wasn't because they were not incredible. It's because oh, you it's were I not sucked. incredible. <laughs> yeah, I had so many problems. I had to do a restart midway through. I did so poorly. I was like, oh god, this sucks. And man, I I, I you know it's funny not to go off on a tangent, but. When you realize how much of an improvement video games have gotten over the years, like mm-hmm. not even from like a actual graphical state, but like the controls were just so bad. Yeah. Like uh, it, the the last ten years, when you see a game now versus ten years ago, mm-hmm. it's a big advancement that we've had. But um, yeah, we can't solve famine in the world, but we can improve <laughs> yeah, the gaming yeah. process yeah. for the little snot kids in the world, video today in the Western on, world. Yeah. yeah. But priorities, people. So priorities. Let me restate that then. So on Wednesday was Wulong. That came out. Yesterday was the escape room for the new escape simulator game that I did. And then uh, the podcast was Monday. So this comes out Monday. Tomorrow, so Sunday, will be Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, speedrun. And then Wednesday, I actually have an idea of what Wednesday is, but I'm not sure yet. There's a lot. My schedule is Wednesday's Bobo's birthday. I know. It's Pup's birthday. Big day. Big is. day. But yeah. Um, so we'll end it there. Again, don't forget next week to post any questions or hot takes in the chat, in the Discord. Shout and, uh, out to Happy Too. Yes, our dog. Ha- oh. Shout okay, out right, right, right. Yes. on Wednesday. She has a big day. Yeah, She's going to do our, well. Our uncle's dog's She'll getting a big well. surgery. She'll do well. So. Yeah, she'll be okay. But yep. other than that, we'll end it there. Social media down below, promo codes down below, other stream links down below, uh, Discord down below, as I said. And hopefully we will see you guys. I'll see you guys at stream, and you'll see Mom next week. So.